Alright guys, we're at the second set here <clears throat> where the big beaver house is. I went to that first area, there was nothing again, so I pulled everything. I pulled the trap on the slide and the one in that water run. I was going to pull everything today. So it looks like both my uh, MB750s are gone. So we'll see. Um, we haven't caught one, I guess. Beautiful front foot catch. Not sure if you guys can see that from there. That'll be a kit from this year. And this grounder is way over to the side. So I'm thinking it's a little bit bigger beaver. Yep, I've even got him. We got a big one here. Yeah, that's a pretty good sized beaver. So there you can see I got a pretty good front foot catch. If he extended his claws, he'd be right on that pan. So that's an absolute perfect catch. He stepped in that trap absolutely perfect. So I must have set it or set it right or either got lucky, but it's a perfect catch. And I seen this cable, it was dragged way to the side. So I figured either the beaver fought and got away or it was a big one. Looking in the viewfinder, it does not do this beaver justice. He's not a monster, but he's definitely a good beaver. Another perfect catch. Usually those big guys will uh, pull it right down to the knuckle on their hand. But I might have caught him uh, high enough on the arm that uh, he couldn't go anywhere. So now I'm kind of at a crossroads. Personally, I think for sure this beaver, maybe not so much that kit, came from the other house over there because I expected to have activity here yesterday and didn't so I don't know if I should leave them here with it raining tonight it's supposed to rain all day or all night tonight all evening all night and then most of tomorrow morning and potentially up to 10 centimeters of snow so if that's the case the field coming in has worked it is going to be a nightmare and I don't want to make ruts for the farmer so I don't really have any other way to get in here other than that trail or the my trail across the field but we are going to hedge our bets I guess I'm gonna leave that uh, 330 off the crossing I already pulled it I'm not gonna go put it back and we'll leave these two drowners in for at least one more night and see what happens tomorrow and then I'll decide if I got nothing tomorrow we're gonna pull and we're gonna move that way because honestly I think this big bugger come from up there this kit potentially came from up there but I really don't think so I think that kit was here so with that guys I'm gonna get this made up I just stripped a couple bulrushes and I put them over top because it's supposed to rain tonight so at least it won't wash that caster away. Did the same thing there. Just put a stick on it so it doesn't uh, blow away with the wind. And I guess we will come back tomorrow. See what happens. Ian here with uh, Dan Beaver Trapping Supplies. Today we're going to show you how to remove the essence from a skunk. Uh, we caught this guy this morning in a raccoon trap. Uh, he looks nice and fat, nice stripes on him, very well furred. So we're going to actually skin him too. So to begin with, the scent glands for the skunk are located on either side of his bum hole. It's hard to see with uh, all the fur. So what we're going to do is quickly skin it a bit and show you how to do it. 
so I skinned half of him. Uh, you can see this side looks normal. This side, you can see this little plum shaped under skin. That's the gland that we want to suck the essence out of. So when you're not sure where the gland is, it's always nice to skin it, and then you can actually see where it is, because here it doesn't look much different. We'll finish skinning it and get the essence removed. Well, you see, I got this thing skinned down a little ways. You can see these two plums basically on either side. I call them plums. That's what they look like. That's the scent glands right there. So it's nice and easy to see. So all I use is a needle, veterinarian needle. Just uh, hold it here. Jab it in to this gland. And fill her up. You can see how that plum thing shrunk down to nothing almost. That's full of your uh, essence. And that other stuff in there, I call it mustard. It's just the fat from the gland itself. Now put it in a glass container. Squirt it in slowly so it doesn't splash on anybody. And there you have it. That's one gland from a skunk. We'll do the other side right away and see how much we get in the bottle. Now we'll do the other side. A little tough here. There we go. You can see that gland just collapsing. That's basically all we're going to get out of this guy. There you have it, pure skunk essence with skunk fat. Um, that's one skunk, so that's about a half an ounce. All right, guys, we're coming out the next day to check these traps. Uh, it rained, it tried to snow a little bit last night, but obviously it didn't stay. So I got the bike today, because it is rainy and wet, obviously. So let's go in there and see if we got lucky again and caught some more beaver. Here I can see the lock. And our trap is here. So we've had no action last night. I know I keep saying one more night, one more night, but I'm gonna leave them one more day. Kind of the shits, we didn't catch anything today, but that's all right. I need to make sure that I do catch the beaver out of here, because that's what I was hired to do, so. But I think we put a pretty good hurting on them already. I'm gonna trap the the dam in the house that's north of here and we'll see how many we get out of there that can be kind of a pain to trap but we'll give her a whirl and then come first ice we'll come back and we'll obviously check for air bubbles 
just in case anything moved in or we haven't successfully caught everything yet that quad barely left the track in that field I never would have made it with my truck I don't think I might have but I would have created a pretty good uh, mess all right guys I'm gonna head back load her up and I gotta go pick up my mule deer it's done all right guys I'm back at home now just went to the butcher Picked up my mule deer, so I kept uh, kept my back straps has stakes and the tenderloins as themselves. And look at all the salami. I think I got 11, 11 sticks of salami. So my daughter and I are going to cut these into thirds and vacuum seal them. He didn't realize that's what I was going to do. He said he would have done it for me. He figured I wanted them as big sticks, but I always like to cut them into thirds and then I've got all these packs of pepperoni sticks I think there's like 35 packs there's 50 pounds of salami and I think 42 pounds or 40 pounds of pepperoni sticks and they did a nice job on it they cut them all square and true and then these are all the ends so they all look nice in the package and then these are nice little snacks already cut so i'm pretty happy to get it processed usually my wife and i process everything ourselves every year but this year with how warm it is has been we uh we decided to get the mule deer and her moose processed just because i don't have a meat locker to uh store it in so but with that guys i'm gonna get to work here Thanks, till the next time.